Today's podcast is brought to you by the Sports Biz Network, something we just launched. We talk about it a little bit on today's podcast with Natalie White, but it's a platform we've created to connect people in the world of sports, whether you're a CEO or you're a student in college, if you're in the creative space, if you are a coach, an athlete, no matter where you are, there's a place for you. We've got our opening launch summit, June 9th and 10th. Details can be found below. There's a link on the YouTube channel here, or if you're listening on audio only, there's a link in the podcast as well. And now to today's podcast with Natalie White. She is the founder of Moolah Kicks. It's the first women's sneaker brand. We talk about the ideation of it, where it came from, to production, to marketing, branding around it. I love this. She's a badass 22 year old who started this company from scratch. And I love her mindset around why she's doing this and how she's doing it. Love the conversation. Hope you get something out of it. We appreciate you listening. All right, we got Natalie Light. Natalie Light, I'll start over. Yeah. <laughs> we got Natalie Light, like the, not the full version of Natalie White. Yeah. It's, yeah. The, it's the exactly toned down. Natalie, uh, appreciate you joining us. We talked last week. You'll be a part of our Sports Biz Virtual, Sports Biz Network Virtual Summit. That's a mouthful. Uh, next month, but in two days, or probably in a day, because I'll probably get up this up by tomorrow. You launched Moolah Kicks. Talk to us about that and what you're doing. And obviously I know a little bit from our convo last week, but but talk to us about what you're doing because I love this stuff. Yeah, look, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. And, you know, I know we've talked in the past, Pat, but Tim, to give you a little bit of background too, my brand Moolah Kicks, we drop our first sneaker for pre-sale on Friday, May 7th. So what that means is that all the sneakers you see behind me in gray and white, will be available for people to reserve for the month from May 7th through June 7th for like $89. And what it is, is Moolah Kicks is the first women's basketball sneaker brand with a mission to fight for gender equality and make sneakers fit for female ballers. So I'm not sure if you guys have had the experience, but when you walk into a sneaker store, female basketball players are forced to either shop in the men's or the children's section for their sneaker. And women's basketball and all the players really just deserve way more than to be wearing sneakers that, you know, don't fit their feet. And then also that have that negative social implication. So Moolah is really aiming to elevate women's basketball and provide a brand that accurately represents all of the women's basketball community, you know, and stands for a vehicle for the women's game. Love that stuff. Now, I don't know if you can see in the back of Tim, there's a little squishy mole back there, his daughter, but she's only five. And I've got a a nine day old little girl. So we haven't bought, yeah, yeah, we haven't bought the shoes yet, but but totally understand where you're coming from. Tim, are you going to say something there? I've got a slew of questions. I'm interested in a lot of the business angle, but go ahead. Well, go. You, you, you go. Little, little brother first. All right. All right. So, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start. So, so, from what I understand, shoe business is tough, right? You have all yeah. these different sizes. How do you even get started in this space? Let's start there. Well, the first, the first thing is you've got to grow your network. You have to have a reason that you're in this beyond just making sneakers because with all of the players already in the industry you're not going to get any you're not going to get your foot in the door you're not going to have any progress if you don't have a bigger reason why you're making sneakers or why your brand is different there's too many players but the first real tangible step as well is making the inside of the sneaker which is the last and i have one right here to kind of show you if you don't aren't familiar with sneaker creation this is the foot form that goes on the inside of all of the sneakers and it's what makes men's and women's sneakers different because the women's sneakers are made with a female foot form whereas the men's are made with a male foot shape and then each company actually has their own proprietary last like this that changes the way those sneakers fit your foot interesting okay and, and then so yeah. how did, where did you, when did you come up with the concept and then what was like your first three steps to like actually getting this, you know, working prototype and then obviously the, the pre-sale in a couple of days or tomorrow? Yeah, 
I, it was probably, you know, about 80, 100 steps. I don't know if <laughs> yeah. I can knock it down to three, but the, where I started was with making that last. Um, it's no knowledge where women's and men's feet are different. It's applying that to a basketball form and the trainers at Boston College, along with someone on the Liberty staff helped me put that together, consulted me on it a little bit. And then we took that, I networked and actually met Shaquille O'Neal's designer who connected me to Sean Gale, who's a coach for his two daughters up in Maine. He's a tremendous designer. He's the one that's behind all of the Moolah Kicks designs. And he helped create a design around this form because the design is all based off of what the inside of the sneaker is going to look like. That's what gives the whole shoe its shape. Mm -hmm. So we started from nothing really. And he created a design around this woman's foot form that Moolah had created. And then we partnered with a factory overseas and some development agents who used to work for some pretty big footwear brands and now have a strong relationship with factories overseas. And how, how did you get connected to that? Yeah, I want to know how you got connected. Cause like, I mean, you're young. We've been this, Tim and I have been like, I, I, when we talked on the phone, I talk, told you about our first business Yeah. and, and we were, it was a fitness app. Well, morphed into a fitness app basically. And this was like 2013, Tim, did we start our first business 2010, then went 2011 and then probably morphed into there in like 2013, 14 ish. And one of the hardest things ever to do is actually get in front of people you want to talk to. Like you can, yeah. you can, you can shoot an email. It's great at getting, getting to the person, especially early. Like I would have no idea where to, how to reach out to so-and-so person, but Tim was great to, in getting in front of those people. How were you able to do that? Get in front of the right people at the right time. Cause it's so, I mean, there's gotta be a ton of different ways to try to do that. Yeah. I'm sure you failed a bunch at it too. Yeah. So the key really is I got in front of every single person I could. I mean, I wouldn't say I got in front of the right people every single time. I would say I got in front of 30 people every step of the way and then found the right person until I found the right person. So there were a lot of factories that I could have worked with. There were a lot of options, you know, that, that came across my plate for designers, for someone who I could consult on the last, for every aspect of the business but you have to do what's true and going to be healthy for your brand um, and find those relationships that are important so I would say what happened with me was just networking networking and continuing to talk to different people who are interested to find whose values really align with what we're going for at Moolah. Yeah. And how, long, how long has that journey been from from concept to tomorrow? About two years. Okay. And full time. When I graduated school, I was working full time on it. And and how about family? Are they supportive or are they? Because <laughs> that, that, that oftentimes is a big challenge. It's like, why aren't you getting a job? Why aren't you, you know, getting an internship or whatever that is right out of college? Yeah. No. Everyone's everyone's really supportive. Um, my fr my family, my friends are just excited to see me do something that I really care about and like try to make a change in this world um, of, of women's basketball because. I, if you guys knew me before Moolah, I was constantly talking about, you know, how women's, women's basketball doesn't get this. We don't get that. We don't get the fans. How can we try to get fans? How can we try to, is always trying to push the envelope for women's basketball, but never having an actionable, tangible thing that I could make. And when I thought of Moolah kicks, when I realized we don't have our own sneakers and just how wrong that really was. It gave me, I mean, I knew that it was something I was going to go with the second, the second I just um, thought of it. I was like, we have to do this and we have to do it with everything we have. So I've been really lucky that everyone's been so supportive of me. That's cool. And, and so, so walk us through, you know, tomorrow is the pre-sale, right? It's what did on you guys, fr Friday. Friday. Two days Friday. Friday. I keep saying tomorrow because this is launching tomorrow or the if podcast. Still two days, two days in right. change. Okay. Friday, okay. whatever. Right. Friday. May 7th, May 7th, whatever day you're listening to this. <laughs> um, walk us through like the partnerships, the like the PR strategy. Like what, what are you doing that's going to help you kind of amplify May 7th? 
Yeah, on May 7th, we're looking to be featured, hopefully, by some of the women's sports brands, by articles who typically feature sneakers, just as many media outlets, really, that are interested in pushing out this message towards fighting for gender equality and towards giving women their own basketball sneaker because, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of news outlets who still stay really true to actually giving not fake news to giving authentic news and care about an initiative like this. So I've been doing pretty much my own PR strategy. Uh, A couple of people have been helping me with PR pro bono and we're looking to find some journalists who are interested in the topic and passionate or have kids have sisters that play that type of connection yeah i mean this is like the time to do something like yeah. this yeah exactly. you know even a lot of the the brands and places and media outlets that talk about like we want to do this and we want to gender equity and support this and support that a lot of times it's bullshit but now even if it is bullshit, they're still talking about it and pushing it and doing stuff. Have you gone? I know, I know we talked a little bit about some of the places, by the way, the one that I said I'd reach out to, I did, did not hear back. Just FYI. I didn't, didn't tell you. Oh, I did that's not hear right. back yet. Um, no worries. Um, but so have you like gone to like players in the W and been like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. What do you think? Would love to, you know, or, or big name college players at this point. Yeah, yeah, definitely big name college players is who we're looking to talk to. What's hard about pro is that they have existing contracts with sneaker companies usually. So sure, sure, if it's sure. in Adidas and Under Armour and Nike and, you know, where they stand is that's how they make a living really because the W is still working mm. to up their salaries. They don't, they don't make very much money, most of them off the contracts. A ba- they do a base, not. A base level WMEA contract is 10K. Exactly. Yeah, but they, that's nothing. Exactly. I mean, and no, so they, uh, but I do feel that like they're still making something, you know, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. haven't been too focused on the, the W players, but mainly yeah. promoting it at a grassroots high school AAU level. So something I have been doing is like going around to the different AAU teams, talking about it, showing it, showing it at tournaments, talking to the teams and telling them the importance of having their own sneaker and also hearing from Mm. them what they want this brand to be what their questions are and what they would like to see sure and and i'm more met from like um not like hey come work with us we're gonna pay you something like people like to support women-owned companies right that's something that's that people are all over right now like i said we'll, we'll buy like if i I mean, if you were like a dude, I probably wouldn't buy a pair of shoes. I don't need to buy a pair of shoes. There's nobody in right. my family that I know that can, I'm going to buy a pair of shoes because you're, you're a startup in a female company. I'm going to buy a pair of shoes on Friday. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly. with them, but, but I'm going to buy them. So there's lots of people like that. And I think a lot of people in the W, one, are easy to get in touch with. I know yeah. that from experience and, and would support it or retweet it or like cool company. And there may be some conflict at times, but I'm, just, just a thought. I know. Yeah, no, maybe it is. Maybe worth some DMs from time to time. But go ahead, Tim. Are you going to say something? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to all the, the strategy, the PR, I, the brand. I like it all. We, I mean, we love, this is our old world of, of startup world mixed with yeah. athletic world, which is our new, new-ish world, five years place uh, and doing stuff like this. So it's like we love this type of stuff and love that you're in a space where there's giants in the space and they're like fucking i'm coming what's up yeah no you have to because at the same token like it's gonna we need a wake-up call for women's basketball and like there this messaging has been so carefully orchestrated of there are no women's basketball sneakers and yet even the women's basketball community doesn't always see the problem with that and that's not that's by design (laughs) that is by a lot of marketing dollars saying these sneakers are unisex pushing the fact that the inner foot form is different under the rug pushing the fact that the knee ankle and leg injuries in women's basketball are through the roof we're not wearing sneakers made for us yet we're going to blame it on wide hips and bad training when it's there's a huge problem in every store and on every player's foot so it's something that needs to be talked about. And I think when people hear it, 
it's definitely eye opening to, oh my gosh, there is a problem. And I can't say that it's all these big companies fault because at the end of the day, they exist to serve a huge market and women's basketball is a really strong market that is there, but it's not the average market who's wearing their sneak, buying their sneakers to go to the gym. Um, you know, it, it is a, more of a niche. So I don't, they've definitely dabbled, but it's, it's not there. It's not something that they're going to focus on. Um, but although that still means the women's basketball community does need their own sneaker and start to need their own gear. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've read uh, the Under Armour story, but I'm, I'm envisioning you like, you know, uh, Kevin Plank, the founder of Under Armour, how he went, you know, door to door, basically school to school and was just selling out of his trunk, basically his one T-shirt of, of Under Armour. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like how I'm picturing you as like you're the grassroots, the AU, the, the basketball team is just going like door to door at the beginning, at least. Yeah, I would say I heard a story about Kevin Plank that when he was first starting out, he had like five business cards or something that all said his name and all had a different role underneath it. So it would <laughs> say like Under Armour head of sales, Kevin Plank, Under Armour, you know, PR specialist, Kevin Plank. And I have to say, I've never related to something more than, than that story <laughs> because it's true. Like we're door to door we're putting up posters, we're shooting our own videos. I'm, you know, I'm dyeing t-shirts in the bathtub uh, so mm -hmm. that people can have shirts for the video shoots. I'm, it's everything, right? Like I'm going out there, I'm talking to the teams, I'm managing the supply chain, I'm overseeing the product development, doing the PR, doing the marketing, doing the social, I mean, it's crazy uh, the amount of hats, but that's a good image, absolutely, Tim. There is no job that, that we're not doing over here. Yeah, yeah, no. And so who, who's all involved in the company then? Well, I am the sole founder. And then we have a design, a head of design, Sean right. Gale, who I mentioned. He was absolutely instrumental in both the design and the product development because it's such a meticulous and detailed process. You have to be an expert. You, there's mm -hmm. no possible way you can't have an expert on your team in that so he is our everything footwear expert he definitely is with 20 years in the industry and then we have a development agency that we work with two individuals Robert and Karen they're absolutely terrific they help our overseas relationships but if you're going to count everyone that's had a hand in moolah it's way bigger because you have to count the development team that is overseas touching our sneakers every day, right? It's about 10 people. We have a marketing agency that we work with about 10 people on the Moolah account. Then we have a web development team of six people, a intern social media team of six people and a, a bunch of different personnel in all of the areas of the business. However, because Moolah is yet to bring in too much money because we're yeah. just doing our pre-sales now, there's no one on an official payroll. It's all usually through an intermediary. Gotcha. Yeah. So you got, you got to sell, so drop Friday, you got to sell 200, 2000, right? 2000. Yeah. Let's add a, stick a zero on the back of that, Pat. That's, that's your 2000. goal or what was the 2000 number? That's what we need to sell in order to fund the first production run. Okay. Okay. And, yep. and how confident are you? I'm, you know, you got to go in confident. Shit. Yeah, so Shit. I was going to say. 2000? Very, yeah. You got to go in confident. Yeah. You know, I, would, I wouldn't be here if, if I went into things half seas. So I'm definitely I mean, confident that we can hit that number. Well, yeah. you just named like 40 people on, on the team ish, right? So there's yeah. 40. I got 41. Yeah. Tim can be 42. There's people on social. How many followers you got on this IG? A thousand. This can yeah. happen. 2000, yeah, so, 2000 is doable. And we sure. have a I, month, right? We have from May 7th through June 7th. You get, yeah. you get a hundred teams, right? Ish. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Easy, 100, easy breezy. 100, yeah. A hundred teams would be like even, yeah. Yeah. A hundred teams 15 of 15 or? or it doesn't matter like 10, 15 yeah. Yeah. puts us halfway. You all, there's also an option to purely donate. 
So hoping there's some successful yeah. women's basketball players out there who just believe in the cause, who yeah. don't play anymore. There's a lot of options. There's merch options. So there's going to be different things to buy. You know, it's not going to be all uh-huh. basketball sneakers. Yeah. It's anyone who believes in it. Yeah. I, I, I love that you're doing that too. Yeah. yeah. I think that, I think that, and I don't know if you, maybe this is part of your strategy, but all of those brands that are part of the W, like I know that Google even just came out. They're doing a yeah. big thing. So like I would yeah. hit all of them up and maybe they'll, they'll sponsor and uh, like a hundred, you know, donate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Donate yeah. Else, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Or I mean, Deloitte there's, or, you know, because oh, Deloitte's a huge player in the women's basketball space. And the thing is that right. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be prohibited from bot, from wearing sneakers that fit your speed, especially when so many of these girls rely on basketball to get them to college and to the next stage of their life like the, basketball is really their ticket and if you're wearing sneakers that don't fit your feet and you're putting yourself at risk for injury and really kind of jeopardizing the odds of your future um, that's something that I think a lot of brands would promote getting on these girls feet as soon as possible wearing sneakers that'll help them to lessen their chance of injury so I can definitely see it being something that a bigger brand would want to sponsor and get behind just because they do care about all of the girls coming up. 100%. I, I think that 2000, you should definitely hit that. And yeah. even if like, and here's where I think W and I've talked to a handful of Wers over the last yeah. couple of weeks. That's why I'm like on the W thing. Not that you have to go this route at all, but I feel like it would be an easy thing to buy 10 pairs of shoes or something Yeah. or one of them and donate to the to local yep. cause or city or team specifically or whatever. And a thousand bucks isn't nothing. It's a lot to, you know, most yeah. of them. Uh, so it wouldn't be nothing, but it would be a, a great move for them PR wise. Plus they get to do some cool stuff for some cool people in a city that they play in or the city they're from and yeah. support a, a business. There was a thing yesterday or two days ago. So people, I forget who it was. I should look up her Twitter, but she was going through and, and somehow started this thing of getting people to buy WNBA league passes. And they're okay. 20 bucks. Uh, did you see this at all? Let's I see. haven't Let's seen see. it. I don't know how to say her name exactly. Tariko is probably how you say it. T-E-R-R-I-K-A. It's at She Knows Sports on Twitter. And she works for ESPN Podcast. Is that what it says okay. in the bio? I, I want to so, look real quick. Okay, go ahead. So basically, she was like, I don't know how it started even, but it came across my feed somewhere. And people okay. were buying WNBA League passes for other people. And it was like, hey, just DM me and I'll set you up. And I was like, I'll buy 10. So 200 bucks, 20 bucks per, I'll buy 10. And what, what she's doing is getting people to, like people want to support the game. So uh, growing the game was the, the, the phrase, growing the game. So how can you grow the game? You get more people to have access to them, right? And there's games on ESPN yeah. and ABC and whatnot. But this is a way to get more people to be able to follow their teams all year round. And exactly. Like, there's been hundreds of people who've bought these, meaning thousands of people, thousands of dollars put into this. Let me see if she has her actual numbers. Yeah, did she, did she publish those? She, I don't, she did. <laughs> this was over a, almost a day ago, 17 hours ago now. Okay. 152 WNBA league passes. Oh, no, 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 that was just yesterday. So, so 312. There you go. That's one and one person generated all of that. Yeah. Time, yep. So, times twenty bucks is like six six twenty four, right? Yeah. Six sixty six thousand two hundred forty dollars. I think my mask got on there. If it's not, don't give a shit. Yeah. But, yeah, there you but go. You see how? Sure, yeah. Yeah. You see how just a wave of something led into this whole other deal, and, that, and that's why I think it's such such a great time to be a part of this. So so many people just bullshit and they're like, oh, support this, do this, do that, and they just want to talk about it. 89 bucks is a reasonable price for people to, to actually support yeah. and do this. Right. Absolutely. It's not, it's not 400 bucks where it's like, yo, I don't have 400 bucks to just be like buy a pair of shoes. Yeah. And we have so a program I, as well, where if people are interested in supporting, so of course they can purely donate to the brand, but there's also a program set up where you can buy a pair of sneakers and I will give them to a girl coming up here in New York city who is okay. needs the performance sneakers but can't afford them yeah yep. so that is another option that we have towards giving back to the game do you have the specific like what specific place or is it specific 
nonprofit or a specific school or what, how are you set, setting that up? I'm we'll be set, that's what's over here. Yeah, yeah, Moolah's setting that up. So I obviously know all the different programs here in the city. Um, there's a lot of girls who are very talented who rely on their AAU programs or programs in general to equip them with gear. However, that gear sometimes is is pretty budget, so they don't always have the nice equipment that they deserve. So we would be going around to some of those teams and giving out the sneakers. Love that. Are you, so your, your website slash platform, are you building something or is this like on a Kickstarter or what are you using? Yeah, it is a custom website that all of the, all of the crowdfunding will be taking place directly on moolahkicks.com. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And there's definitely a, last week push in web development that was just all mm-hmm. this morning <laughs> yeah of that we know that well are you yeah. is that 89 dollars? is that going to be the price across the board or is that like a pre-launch sale type stuff or yeah, what that's a pre-launch sale for sure because oh, we're the real the retail price will be 109 up to 120 somewhere in that range but of course we want to give people the opportunity one to have access to these sneakers and then also to have a little bit of savings as they're buying them pretty far in advance yep yep okay have you looked into like the afterpays or affirms type stuff too i haven't i'm not sure if that's possible with um before you are actually making a, a firm sale yeah so i think, I think it might the, post yeah yeah the affirm stuff and on all those roll out um platforms really come into play when you're delivering the product soon after purchase right right and that's uh, pat or anyone else who's not familiar it's basically you can take that 109 and break it into three payments or whatever so how, you, how do you know i'm familiar why well, you you or anybody else i don't know I've, I've never heard of it yeah so so like a lot of like you know, like big purchases, not that this is a big purchase by any means, but like call it a mattress. Like I know yeah. Casper and stuff use there are a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar purchases you can or Peloton, for example. Peloton mm-hmm. uses the firm, you spend fifty dollars a month, but it's a three thousand dollar product and there's no finance zero financing. So it's it's um it's very user friendly for but you can even yeah. use products that are like hundred dollars and break it up into payments. Yeah. Interesting. What will, else you, will you do so let's talk post launch so may 8th we're doing the pr everything's coming in will you do facebook ads have you set up all that type of stuff yeah facebook like? facebook instagram tiktok ads are currently running okay. in a pre-sale phase, and then in a hmm. awareness campaign right now and then on that date they'll flip over to an actual pre-sale campaign where people can get linked right to the site gotcha and is that something yeah. you is, is that something you put together? Like you put, you did the strategy and, and dollar amounts and all that stuff. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Most things I'm going to give out that, that Natalie white card that has all the different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, I think that, I mean, you're, it's such like, um, it, it is niche, but I feel like you can target the right people yeah. with those ads with this. I think like your ads shouldn't kill it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with all the filters you can put on, say, yeah. you know, if you're a fan of UConn basketball, so please excuse my, my orange straw coffee right there, but you know, you can really, <laughs> you can really target people. So um, hopefully it reaches the right audience of yeah. who would be interested in the sneaker. Definitely. No, that's, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I'm excited. I, I, I definitely will be watching uh, every yeah. four hours that will you have just like, in oh, yeah, the countdown. you have the, the, the ticker going up and kind of showcasing or will you just hide that behind the scenes? Will I hide what? Like, like I'm so hundred people, 200, sold, 300, yeah. 400. Yeah. Oh no, you'll see that. Yeah. There's a, there's a progress bar. That's going to show how many people have bought everything, how many, how much we've raised. There's going to be a, a bar that unlocks on the seventh. Okay. So, so you go to moolahkicks.com and you can enter your email address, which I already did Today. now. Yes. Yeah, you can do that right now, right? Yeah. Right. And so I did that. So then, I'll, how will I, will I get an email saying like, now you can officially pre-register or pre-order? Yeah. Okay. Well, will, will it come then, from Natalie, the digital marketing specialist? It probably will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Nice, nice. I'll change it like Natalia. No, the there you go. Marketing stuff Still stuff. A on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, we're excited for you. Anything else, Timothy? No. Any any questions if, or what, thoughts or anything you want to throw out there? Yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions, you know, I love the hard ones, the easy ones. So well, if there's anything well, else that's unrelated, feel free to uh, to ask. Me. Well, why why don't you have a social media? Or if you do, I can't find it. Like I typed in Natalie White and there's probably 800 of them, but even tagging you in the Moolah kick stuff. Mm-hmm. It's Natty E. White. Natty E. White. Why aren't you tagging yourself in there? Because I think what you could be doing is building a brand around you and the founder of this brand new company. I think that's a, a thing yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've gotten a couple of follows from it, but I haven't, I opened mm-hmm. up my account. I haven't, I guess I haven't been tagged in too many. I think it's because so many people have gone to Moolah kicks through my account too. Uh, that I forget on the Moolah Kicks account to tag myself back. But I, I definitely would. Because I'm I, like I looked at the I looked at like three or four different ones and you weren't tagged. And I was like, maybe she doesn't have social. No, I have social. All right. But not on it too much, but I'll slowly start ramping it up. Yeah. I mean to me it's like I said, I'm not buying shoes because yeah. it's a shoe. I'm buying it because of you. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are in that same spot where you're gonna like buy it to support it and then when you put the shoes on you like them you're like oh shit that's why i bought it cool now i this will be a consistent buy for me yeah for me i'll probably wait you know another five years before i bought a pair of shoes for a, a little girl do you have like little like what are the sizes how young did we go here the sizes to go? the sizes right now go from seven and a half is the smallest size up to eleven and a half but next year we're looking to go from seven and a half through probably 15 women's 15 okay yeah but that's definitely the seven and a half is definitely the smallest we're probably gonna go because we're the distinction is we want to make it very clear that these aren't children's sneakers these are performance shoes and so many girls have had to shop in the children's section so we want to make sure that the difference is clear there and as we go down in size even a size seven and a half is going to perform at the same level that a size 10 and a half is because usually when women are a size seven and a half and they're shopping in the children's section the rubber wears out super quickly their feet tear through the mesh in the top everything's made very cheaply because it's children's sneakers so we want to maintain the quality of the brand as well and the quality control by keeping it in those women's sizes Makes sense. Are you, oh, yeah. are you shipping U.S. only? Yeah, U.S. only right now. Okay. Any plans for global? Yeah, I mean, plans for everything. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Plans, plans for everything. You know, I, there's, there's literally nothing that I am against doing with this brand. I just want it to be something that the women's basketball community can get behind. And if, if they want it, that's what we're going to push. So if a yeah. ton of people overseas say, we want this brand global, We'll work towards going global. If people here say, okay, we want this brand, but we need you guys to make Crocs too, or like off-court shoes, then that's what we'll do. So just making sure that we have a plan, but that we're also really flexible towards hearing and understanding what the girls themselves want. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Crocs is blown up too, by the way. What's blown up? Crocs. They're always blowing up they, they even oh. more, they just had they just had a like 100 percent like increase in sales from yeah crocs is insane crazy, something crazy yeah yeah well i got a lot of ideas i don't want to talk about it on here but i got some ideas and, and some people and some connects potentially as things start to go here uh we can talk about this in the future maybe we'll talk about it a little bit at the sports biz network virtual summit june yeah. 9th with you what would be cool then is, is it'll be it. Yeah, it'll be after all of this too. So you'll right. you'll have yeah. ha- you'll have sold like eight thousand pre-orders. Oh yeah. wow! Okay, eight thousand. I'm cool 8, with eight thousand. Yeah, yeah, eight thousand pre-orders, and we'll, we can talk about a little bit. We'll talk a little bit more just about the brand and business in general. But uh, we could talk about how successful that is going, and then we'll talk about the future there too. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Cool, I'm excited Natalie. For it. We, we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on. Thank you.